Hello and welcome. We are looking at some brand new Excel functions today. We're going to be looking at a function called group by and one called percent of. First of all, let's get oriented. I've got some data here I've taken out of the AdventureWorks data warehouse. So it's a simple view of the sales data. I've got some grouping fields, order date, category, subcategory, product, and a couple of measures, sales amount and order quantity. So let's see what we can do with these new functions. Okay, just to remind ourselves, I've put a formula on this sheet one, just to show us the headers of the sales view. And let's get stuck into this group by function. We'll just type group by, that's the new function name. And you can see there's a lot of arguments here, but only three of them are mandatory. Row fields, values, and function. For row fields, we're going to take the sales table and just this time, just gonna take the category just to keep it simple. And for values, again, the sales table and sales amount. And then the function, this is the great part. The function here can now be any aggregate function. And we don't need to put parentheses. We literally type the name of the function without parentheses. We close it. Previously, we would have had to put a lambda there. Now we don't. This is by far the best, by far the best part of this release. And you can see that it creates a very simple group by summary of the chosen category field. Even better than that is that not only does it not have to be sum, so let's for example put average, that would give us the average sale in each category. Not only that, but we can put this brand new function called percent of, and that will give us a column percent of the sum of the sales. So 2%, 96%, and 1%. But the really, really cool part is that we can create a vector of aggregates. So let's say sum and percent of with H stack. And now we have sum of sales and percent of sales next to each other for each category. And if we change it to V stack, it will put them on the rows instead of the columns. So sum of sales, percent of accessory, sum of bikes, percent of bikes, and so on. Okay, let's make things a bit more interesting here. Instead of percent of, because we're gonna get more category fields, instead of percent of, let's put max in there because really the percent of doesn't make sense too much of grand total of multiple categories. And in the category field, let's change that from just category and I'll just select these columns here. Let's see what we've got now. Okay, we've got accessories, bike racks, bike stands, bikes, touring bikes, sum and max, great. Uh, but further to that, we can use H stack and then year of V sales order date, date, type it properly so I don't mess things up and put the paren around there. The reason I'm doing it this way is because we can now apply functions to some of the columns and not others. So I'm apply applying the year function to this the order date column to get the year and I'm stacking it horizontally with the category and subcategory. So what we are actually putting into the row fields argument is a dynamic array and whatever you want to do to construct that dynamic array, providing it is the same length, is the same number of rows as the value field, providing they're both the same number of rows, this will work. So you put a dynamic array into the row fields and you can get really creative with the kind of things that you do. So now I've got year, category, and subcategory, sum, and max. Let's talk about some of these other arguments. So if I put a comma in here, you will see that the next argument is called field headers. You can see that right here. And here are the values that it's suggesting. No, yes, but don't show. No, but generate. Yes, and show. So there, if we group them by no and yes, first of all, it's saying, are there any headers in the data that you've provided to the function? So there aren't any headers in this particular example because I did not select the header of the view of the sales data. So the two that I'm going to consider to begin with are no, that's the default, that's what we're looking at right now, and no but generate. So let's try no but generate. Let's put a two into the field headers argument and see what happens. So when you choose no but generate, what it does is it gives you row field one, row field two, and row field three. Um, so that's kind of okay, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure anyone would really want to see that kind of thing, but what you could do is now wrap this group by in something else and dynamically change these row field uh, column headers to something else. So that is no but generate. Now, if we want to look at the other options, what we need to do is include some headers in the data. So instead of V sales order date in here, what I want is actually all of it, including 
the header and instead of vSales category subcategory what I want is all of it including the header so like that and then I want to do the same for the sales amount because they need to be the same length I now have headers in the data that I've provided to the function. It seems that maybe we're early stage of this release because, because I have provided year of order date, it doesn't really know what to put in this column header. So the default has now become yes and show by the looks of it. So if I change that to three, yes, it's the same. And the other option for yes, where I've got headers is one, of course, yes, but don't show, and that will hide them. So some things to point out here is that when you have headers included, the default becomes three, whereas when you don't have headers included, the default is apparently zero. And if you apply custom functions to any of the columns that you pass into the group fields, um, sometimes it will not figure out what to do with those. So in this case, because I applied the year function to the order date field, it has put value uh, in that column. The next argument for us to look at is called total depth. Uh, let's skip the headers argument for now. And total depth has these five values which I've put in the spreadsheet but they're also displayed here. No totals, grand totals, grand and subtotals, grand totals at top, grand and subtotals at top. Now hopefully those should be pretty clear what they mean and in fact they do exactly what they say. I like to choose grand and subtotals at top so I'm going to put minus two in that argument and see what we get. This is actually really great. It is so simple. I love the way that this works. I especially love the fact that you can put them at the top. It would actually be really interesting to be able to have a mixture, to have grand total at the top and subtotals um, under underneath their data. But uh, for now, this is really great. So I've got a grand total of the whole thing. And then I've got a subtotal of 2010 yeah, within bikes. I, I apparently don't have a subtotal for bikes within 2010 so that's perhaps something that's not quite what I expected uh, but nevertheless this is a great start so that is the total depth argument okay I have put zero in the total depth to turn off the grand and subtotals I have actually skipped over the next argument called sort order because that is somewhat complex and I need some more time to understand it I will publish a new video about that in due course but I just want to quickly tell you about this filter array argument this is actually super useful. What we can do here is provide a Boolean array, so true, false array, the same length as the measure and the categories to filter the data before it's aggregated. So this can be as complex as you want and you've used the filter function probably. The second argument of the filter function is what you would put into this filter array argument of group by. So let's very simply say, uh, okay, so let's return everything that is only about bikes. Take the category field equals um, bikes. So that's filter array. So now what I've done is just return the filtered data for bikes. And that's what you do with the filter array. You simply put a true false and it can be as complex as you want. That's a super simple one. But that's what I've done for today. So in a future video, I will come back and I will explain in detail how sort sort order works. Currently, I think it's got a few bugs to be honest, but I need to figure out what those are so that I can explain them to you and, and help you work around them. In another video, I will talk about the other function that was released yesterday called pivot by and pivot by is an expanded version of group by but includes column fields as well so not just row fields but column fields as well so that is it for today thank you for watching i hope you enjoy these new functions have a great day